Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a modified form of an ancient Japanese art of self-defense that relies heavily on pressure points and complex holds. It's one of the fundamental disciplines of ultimate fighting. The family you're about to meet, the Gracies, are masters of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. As ESPN the Magazine's Curry Kirkpatrick reports, they're the Kennedys of the tap-out, the Barrymores of the octagon, the Rockefellers of the chokehold. <laughs> Over three generations, the rough and ready Gracies from Rio de Janeiro have spread the gospel of Brazilian jiu-jitsu across the globe and become a dynasty as the unchallenged first family of martial arts. In the Gracie family, there's so many people. There's 50 members of the Gracie family actively involved doing jiu-jitsu today. All the while, they've been directed and inspired by their legendary patriarch, Elio Gracie still going strong and feeling spry at the age of 90. I did not develop a sport. I developed a style for self-defense. Our jiu-jitsu is like what the samurais do without the weapons. We perfect the technique so much that even the weak people like me and anybody else can benefit from it. My dad was the biggest thing you can imagine in Brazil. And my father being the small guy, always fighting somebody bigger, heavier, much stronger than him. He gave the Brazilian youth hope. If I want to just grab your arm, I can't, but when you put your arm in the wrong position, then I can break it. Many opponents venturing into Elio's hell were likewise broken by the baddest boy from Brazil. In 1950, Elio faced the two top-ranked jiu-jitsu fighters from Japan. He rendered both of them unconscious with chokeholds. Twice I could have killed two Japanese, but the referee said keep going because they didn't tap, but they were sleeping already, and thanks to me, they're still alive. There are certain negatives to being the toughest guy on your block, not to mention your continent, especially when you're five foot six, 140 pounds, and everybody wants a piece of you. When Elio Gracie was 22 and already a national celebrity, the Brazilian press asked the champion wrestler what he thought of Gracie. The wrestler said Gracie had nothing. And besides that, his fights were fixed. Wrong answer. Bam! And smack him on the ear. He came to me when he gave him a shot, he said, he didn't have a shot. He blocked him on the head. He threw him on the head, on the ground. He landed on his head. He started bleeding. Depois he enforquei ele. Choked him out. Com a queda também, dele uma queda, ele quebrou a clavícula, bateu no cimento. When he hit the cement with the fall, he broke the collarbone. That environment is where the Gracie family was growing up. So every tough guy in town wants to measure his possibilities against the guys who are on top of the hill, and we are the Gracies, we're it. So every time that people would want to test themselves, it would be against the Gracie. What the Gracies did in the late 80s was bring their family form of jiu-jitsu to the U.S., where their style helped create a whole new phenomenon, ultimate fighting. My goal has always been to show the world that we're beneficial for everybody if they knew how to fight. Uh, on the ground, it gives them more confidence. So uh, I started planning an uh, event and ultimately led to the Open Fighting Championship. When my son developed the Ultimate Fighting Championship, what he did is that he showed the whole world that Jiu Jitsu was the best. You could actually compare different styles of martial arts in the same arena karate versus judo, kung fu against taekwondo, and jiu jitsu against boxing, whatever, and then show the world what really was effective or not in the concept of, you know, martial arts. In other words, it was a setup for another of Alio's sons, Hoist Gracie, who proceeded to win three of the first four Ultimate Fighting Championships. Once I'm on the ground, you see the fight's practically over. They don't know what to do. Like I fought a boxer, I got in a clinch, I took him to the ground, and he just quit. He knows he's in trouble. Did you know Hoist would be so successful? Yeah, I had a hint. I felt that he would be doing very well. Because I know his game, I know what we can do, and I know I've seen other styles of martial arts. They're very limited to only a certain aspect of a real fight. They don't have the complete approach as we have. It's not my fault. You know, somebody has to be the best. We just happen to be it. They're the best teachers as well. Out of the ring, the Gracie style has become doctrine in rape prevention seminars and police academies. 
Establish a base first. Right, now make a frame when he's in act. They've helped choreograph fight scenes in movies such as Lethal Weapon with Mel Gibson. And at their academies, their celebrity students include musician Tommy Lee and actors Nicolas Cage and Ed O'Neill, who is better known as Al Bundy in the TV series Married with Children. I used to do a little boxing. And what I want to do is get in one good shot and get a little bit of respect. O'Neill has trained with the Gracies for nine years. He says that on two occasions, he has been forced to apply his lessons to the real world. Choke. The guy attacked a friend of mine in the, in the street, and I, I pulled him down from behind, and I put a, a rear choke on him, and I choked him. I choked him out. So it worked for me. Choked him out? Yeah, I choked him unconscious. And what was the other one? The other one I was attacked... Uh, <laughs> It was something with my ex-wife and a guy and a <laughs> but it, I, I just I put him in the guard and I held him down and it was instantly broken up that's all so you didn't choke him out but I didn't get hurt that's the main point I didn't lose O'Neill also marvels at the ancient alio he'll lay on the mat and let you sit and mount him and say attack you know and you're not gonna catch him and if he sits on you and you say don't escape you know you can't get out but you just defend he'll eventually catch you at 90. And Alio still catching opponents, still choking out. Even though my age now, any one of you guys want to roll around with me, you're going to get tired. I'm not. I roll around. I don't use strength. When my opponent gets tired, that's when I beat him. Sit down. Don't get too excited. Next, ultimate fighting goes prime time. Well, I'm not going to stop until I'm the Ultimate Fighting Champion. The Ultimate Fighting Championship has a powerful adversary in Senator John McCain. I still think it's exploitive, and I still think it's too brutal. The new owners of the Ultimate Fighting Championship have made plenty of changes in an effort to appeal to a larger audience. We have tons of entertainment value, just like the WWF would have. But we also have real fights, just like boxing has.